welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to work on the Tropical Flower Scrubby. It's like a dishcloth. It's recommending Red Heart Scrubby yarn. I know that you cannot see the stitches if I use that yarn. So I'm just gonna be demonstrating today with Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. I'm also going to be showing you an alternative option to be able to um, show you how to do a waterfall stitch. This strand here goes all the way from here all the way to the interior which is a big space. I'm going to show you an alternative waterfall stitch that's available to you. So if you wanna do that you'll need a five millimeter size H longer Tunisian hook or a hook that does not have a gripper on it in order to do that. So that's something that you can decide for yourself or do it the way that it's suggesting. So I will leave that in your capable hands and we're going to begin this next and there is a crochet diagram that's available that I drew for you. And I was kind of confused about this pattern uh, the way that it was working especially on round number four. So what I did is that I diagrammed it out that you can download it on my website if you would wish and uh, you just can follow the link in the more information of this video and you can get this as well to be able to help you do it. It's very much like the African flower um, stitch and it's really quite awesome and there's a total of six rounds. So without further ado you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook, hook and if you're gonna do the waterfall stitch uh, a five millimeter size H Tunisian or Afghan hook. It'll just help you out. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So let's begin your journey and you're going to start off and you're gonna chain six. So I'm just using yarn that you could be able to identify all the stitches with. You can still use your scrubby. Um, I don't have an issue with crocheting with that yarn but if you can't see your stitches in a tutorial there's no point doing it. So chain six is to start. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I need you to put your hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over pulling it through and through and there is the starting of the middle of your dishcloth. So let's begin round number one. Let's begin round number one using the same color and put the straggler so that it traps around the ring so that it will be hidden underside. So we're going to do and start chain two and you're going to place in a double crochet into the same ring. So because you started with a chain two and then did this double crochet that's equivalent to a DC um, cluster. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So this is considered one cluster. We need a total of eight. So to do the next cluster we have to chain one and we're going to apply then um, the DC cluster into the ring. How we do that is that we wrap the hook and we go into the ring. We pull through and pull through two and hold. Do not finish this stitch. I want you to wrap the hook and going into the ring again and pull through and pull through two. You can now see three loops. I need you to yarn over and pull through all three and that was a official DC cluster stitch. So there's two clusters out of eight. So chain one and do this again the cluster. So wrap the hook and in, pull through, pull through two and hold and then wrap the hook and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. You see three loops pull through all three. That's another double crochet cluster and now you have three. So now I'm gonna be quiet for the remaining of the round and just do what I'm showing you. So chain one and do your cluster work and put chain ones in between them. So if it were me and I were you I would keep slamming in these clusters until you can count eight. So I have one cluster, two, three, four, five, six, seven and one more. And before you're done I need you to chain one with after you do the last cluster and I want you to attach it to the top here of the double crochet. Okay so now the pattern is suggesting to pull a loop and leave it towards the back side of the work and I want you to do that because that's what the pattern is going to suggest but if we do the waterfall stitch you're gonna fasten off but I'm gonna give you both options when we get there. So let's just start then and if you went over top of the straggler, the loose end like I was doing then you can safely cut that down. If not just use a tapestry needle to hide that in. So let's begin 
round number two and you're gonna start with another fun color. So the pattern states that you can go to any chain one space. Okay, so it can be, it's between any of the clusters. So just put this onto the hook with a slip knot and go into any chain one space and attach it. And now we're going to begin. You're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and in the same spot I need you to double crochet again. But we're not done for that spot. Make sure you go over top of the straggler and catch it underneath as well. So now you're going to chain two and in the same spot two more double crochet. Let that straggler fall to the back. I'll show you how to weave in your ends later. So now I want you to come to the next space after the next cluster and do the uh, exact same thing. So you want two double crochet first. So remember that chain three counts as a double crochet. So two double crochet first, chain two and two double crochet. After that's done, go to the next space after the next cluster and do the same thing. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. So do this all the way around. This is round number two and I'll be back in a moment. So I happen to be uh, passing over this. Just leave it on the back side of the work and you just don't wanna interfere with it. So make sure that you keep the spaces so that they're free of that. So don't accidentally crochet over top of any of the, the strands. Just leave them free and clear into the back. Okay, so this is considered the, the beginning cluster. It looks a little different than the rest of them but just go with it. And then you come over here. Make sure these are out of the way before you do the last one. We're gonna keep this color going for one more round. So we're not gonna worry about the one that we dropped before. So after you get the last one in, you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three and then we're going to begin the next round. So let's start round number three. So round number three, we're in the wrong spot so we need to get ourselves to the chain two space. So we're just gonna slip stitch our way over and then you're going to chain a total of three which will be your first double crochet. And I need you to apply five more double crochet into that same spot. So with the chain three and these five, it gives you a total of six double crochet. It's an important number. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're just gonna immediately come to the next chain two space right over here and you're going to apply six double crochet into that space. And that's all you're gonna do for this whole round. This is round number three. It's basically six double crochets into each chain two space around. I'll have you do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment as we have finished this color and I'll show you how the other part starts and then I'll show you the alternative what I would do if I were you and you were me. When you get all the way around, you have your six in here and then you're just going to slip stitch to the beginning, the top of the beginning chain three. This color is technically done so I'm gonna weave in my ends at the end but I'm just gonna cut this and I'm going to show you the way that it's suggesting and then I'm going to trim that yarn and show you the way that I think it can be done that I think it might be nicer for you. So what I want to do is that I wanna look for that loop here and I'm going to use that to my advantage and show you how to do this um, stitch that they're asking us to do and then I'll show you my alternative. What I'm about to show you is my personal preference and you'll see in just a moment. So right where this is coming out of, I wanna use that loop and I wanna pull it towards where that's on the front side. So just pull it back towards the front side and once it's on the front side you can pull that down. So just pull that there and just pull on the strand so that it tightens and what you're looking for is the height then to get yourself to this round which is what you see. And what they're suggesting to us in the very last stitch here Okay, see this grouping of six in the very last one. It wants you to apply a single crochet. So just match the height. And so you're gonna pull through and then pull through. See, I believe that this here can be a snaggy thing on dishes. So that's just my own personal preference. So I'll show you how the remaining of the round is done like this and then I'll show you my alternative. So I'm going to um, single crochet the next five. So one, two, 
and the fiber in the first six here. So there's just use the first five only. Okay. And once you have the first five in here, I want to do this. And when you do this, you actually have to go down to this round here. Even though this is where this came out of, it's technically right in here. So in order to do that, you're just going to go in behind. So you go right into the center ring and you grab the yarn from behind and you pull through the center ring. And you keep pulling it until you get to the height of where this other one is. You see how it looks different? On scrubby it would not be any different. It doesn't look like, but when you use different uh, yarn like this, it's very obvious. So once you pull it up, you see the two loops pull through the two and that's a long single crochet. So you can see in this yarn, it makes a difference. So then you will go to the first one here. So here's the difference. So the first one here, you were then going to single crochet the next two and then chain two Then you single crochet the next one, chain one and single crochet into the same one and this will be a, a corner in the future. So let's just review one more time. So you're just gonna come and you're just going to single crochet the remaining and then you're gonna come on down here. So you leave the last one of the grouping of six always out. Go into the center of the ring, pull through and pull up and you pull up to the same height and then pull through two. And then starting in the first one, you will just do all the first five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then you have to come on down. And then you'll do the first two. So one and two. And then the third one here is a corner. So it's gonna be single uh, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So you'll notice every other pe petal will have that and that will s that's what's gonna turn it into a square. So here's what it's suggesting. I'm going to frog all this out, meaning to rip it out and I'm gonna show you the way that I would do it if I were you and you were me. So if I were you and you were me, we have this loop and what I'd recommend is cut your yarn. So let's get rid of that yarn completely and just pull that loop and pull that straggler through that loop and tighten it on there. I'll show you how to weave in the ends with the tapestry needle later. Let's start fresh on the outside and I'm going to show you how I would do exactly what we just did but using the waterfall stitch. The waterfall stitch attaches to each step as it goes down and then will come all the way back up. So I'm going to go very slowly to demonstrate how that's done and you'll wanna use your um, afghan hook for that. So my afghan hook is like a Tunisian hook and you need the distance so that you can travel all the way down so you have more room on your hook to play with. So let's turn this back. Um, so this is on the right side and let's begin this round and I'll show you with it with the waterfall stitch. So this is the advantage of tutorial work. I can show you things that are not in the pattern. So let's put our afghan or Tunisian hook on and I wanna go into the last one of a grouping of six. And we're going to attach it. So just pull through and through. So what I'm about to show you is actually in the stitch along for spring th for the Joanne stitch along. This is a double crochet um, going down and then it'll have a single crochet top. So to do this we were using the fillet stitches in that stitch along here. We're just gonna use the spacing. So to start this let's go really slowly and I'll demonstrate. So we're going to place the hook and we're not gonna wrap it first and we're gonna go into the space towards the back side. And when we wrap the hook, we want it to cross over the hook two times. I'll hold. So cross over two times. You see it once and twice. When you're ready, just rotate the hook and pull this back towards the good side through that hole and use your fingernail and push it down the shaft of there. Make sure that the order of those loops never change. And now I want you to come to the next open space and come down and come to the back and wrap it around so that you see it crossing over the hook twice. Once 
Once you're ready, pull towards the front of the side. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to go and go into this space right here. Okay, so it's just a, it's between the stitch work. It would be here, here, you know, it's in between the two stitches. And you're just going to come to the back and you are going to turn the whole project over and spread it out on top of your hook. And you're going to pull through that space. Okay, just spread it out on your hook. I want you to yarn over it and pull just through the two. It's like double crochet. So pull through the two only. And this time I want you to yarn over, pull through two. But this is that crossing beam. So I want you to pass through that as well. So yarn over, pull through those two and that space or that beam space. You only ever have to do this eight times. So it's not like it's gonna be that big of a deal. Yarn over pull through two, yarn over, pull through the two and this space. And turn it over and yarning over, pulling it through two and that was a single crochet top. So I'm gonna demonstrate that again and let's try it again. So let me frog this out and show you one more time. So let's do a waterfall stitch. I'll demonstrate it again. And to go into, the, you wanna play within the spaces. So go into the space and turn the project over and wrap it around your hook twice. Once you're ready, just pull through back to the front side and make sure that the loops never um, cross each other. See how it's crossing over like that? You wanna make sure that they stay organized on your hook. Then you come into the next space to the back and rotate it so that you can see that it crosses here and here. And when you're ready, pull through. The next one, you wanna go in and you wanna split between the two double crochets. So just going into the back and then turn the whole project over and spread it out on your hook. Because I'm starting with the starting strand, you can see that. So in order to get a uh, start, you're just gonna pull through that space that you just went through. And now you're just gonna double crochet yourself back to the top. So yarning over, pulling it through two. Yarning over, pulling it through the two and the space. Yarning over, just pulling through two and yarning over, pulling it through two plus the space. Once you have that done, turn the project over. You can see the waterfall has happened and then yarning over, pulling it through the final two and that's a single crochet top. So it's a double crochet with a single crochet top. I'm now going to demonstrate the remaining of this as we go. So let's do it. So the first, you have the first six, you're only gonna use the first five only and you are going to put in one single crochet in each. So one, two, three, four, and five. Once that's done, you need to waterfall yourself back down to here. So to begin a new waterfall, you come into this space. Okay, and wrap the hook twice. Pull back to the front side, come into the next space and you wrap twice. Come back to the front and then split those two double crochets. So just going right in there, split it and turn the whole project over and spread it out on your hook. Yarn over, pull through that space that you just went through and now you're just gonna double crochet yourself back to the top. So pull through the next two pull through the, the next two, which includes this space. Pull through the next two only. 
and then pull up through the next two and this space. Turn it back over and then pull through the final two and that's a single crochet top. So this uh, particular petal here is gonna be slightly different than what you know. So it's going to be a total of two single crochets in a row. So one and two and then the third one is going to have a point. It's gonna have the corner. So it's gonna be single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. Okay, so one petal will have like a flat side and the other side will have this point and so every other petal will have this so you'll end up with four sides. So I'll show you one more side. So you're going to double crochet or sorry single crochet the next two only. I'm not used to using a Tunisian hook. So if you see me struggling a bit that's why. Okay, so let's do a waterfall stitch going down. So I'll just speed up a little bit. Well, maybe a lot. <laughs> Oops. So I gotta keep it into the back side, don't forget. So yarning over, pulling it through that space and spread it out onto the hook so you can see everything. So yarning over, pulling it through two. Yarning over, pulling it through two plus the space. Yarning over plus pulling it through two. Yarning over pulling it through two plus the space. And that brings me back to the top. And, and then finish it. Single crochet the next five only in a row. So one, two, three, four and five and then waterfall back down in. So do you see why I chose the waterfall? You can leave me a comment. Um, I chose the waterfall so that the waterfall stitches attaches all the way down instead of a long strand that will become a, de uh, a snagger on your dishes. You can also do this with your uh, scrubby if you want. So if this side was flat, this side has to have the point like you had over here. So you'll have the first two as single crochet. Okay, the next one is a single crochet, chain one and a single crochet and there is your next corner. So then you'll single crochet the next two and then waterfall down. So I've already shown you how to do that and you'll end up with, it almost looks like four sides when you're done with the waterfall stitching that will come down. And so it's really kinda cool and I will be back in just a moment. So get this round done. This is round number four it, and uh, hopefully you can just take your time and learn something while you're at it. When you come all the way back around, don't forget that last petal area here. This is an actual corner. So you're just maintaining the pattern as, as what you already know it. So what you've done in this particular format uh, when we did it, we've gotta make sure that we have this done. So I've already done a waterfall in the very beginning. So when you finish the last um, section here, that last stitch is actually already done with the waterfall with, with what I showed you. So now this color is officially done and when we go to examine the work, you're going to notice that the waterfall stitching and it takes a bit of practice um, some, a lot of crocheters have been practicing this stitch along is that you can stretch it out and you can see now that this stitch work is now part of the work instead of uh, any kind of thing that you can lift off. So that's kind of fun. So let's uh, begin round number five and we're going to officially turn this into a square next. So let's go to a square format and we're just going to switch off our color. You can decide to do whatever colors you want. It doesn't make a difference. And I want you to go into a chain one space and it exists where we did those, those single crochet chain one single into the same. Attach it and then chain a total of four which will count as your first treble. So one, two, three, four. Noticing that I switch my hook back. So now I'm going to treble into the same stitch but I'm not quite done with that yet. I wanna chain one 
and then put two more trebles into the same one. This is your corner. So let's work my way and my goal is just to get myself to the next corner and you can actually physically see it. It's right there. So this is actually take two for me. So I got my corner in and so the first stitch is actually here. See this, this whole th contraption is covering over top of the first stitch. So that's why I missed it. So the first three stitches in a row including the one that's kind of hidden is going to be a treble each. So we have one, two, and three. The next two stitches that you're gonna run into will each be a, do a double crochet. So just two in a row. So we have one and two and we're changing the heights of the stitches so that the corner can be seen. The next three stitches in a row will each be a half double crochet and that's the halfway point across the side. So one, two, and three. And now we're going to get bigger again. So the next two in a row are each gonna be a double crochet each. And then the last three before the corner, one, two, three, is each going to be a treble. And then you're ready for the new corner which will be in this chain one right here. So when you do the corner it's going to be two trebles first followed by just a chain one and then um, two more trebles into the same one. So when you do this next two treble it's going to cover over top of that first stitch that you need. So just be cautious of that. And then I'll take you through one more side. So it's right here. So the first three in a row are going to be a treble each. And then we have two doubles, so two double crochet. And then the halfway point is going to be three half double crochets in a row. And then we're gonna get bigger again, so two half double, or two double crochets in a row. And then the three remaining before this, uh, before the point is going to each be three treble or one treble in each of the three. And then you're ready for another corner. Okay so it's in the chain one it's right there. So it's going to be two trebles. Chain one and two more trebles. So I want you to do this all the way around. This is round number um, five. And we have one more round to do after this. And this is very achievable with the scrubby. It's just it's hard to see it on the camera. So you'll notice that this is going to turn square which is awesome. And I'll be right back in a moment. So get the remaining of this round done. When you come back around the last three stitches before the ending is going to be uh, one treble in each of the three. And then that's where the story ends for this round. This is round number five. And so it suggests um, to change the color one more time just um, slip stitch it to the top of the chain four. So I'm gonna get rid of this color and then I'll bring on my final color just to finalize off this project. So starting in any corner that you would like to it's a chain one space corner and you're going to attach it. Chain one and apply three single crochets into that corner. Very easy round essentially every um, stitch gets something. So just remember that when you do three single crochets into the corner it can kind of cover over the first stitch. So don't forget to do that or you'll be missing a stitch if it matters to you. So you're just going to single crochet into every stitch all the way across to the corner. The corners will be three single crochet and then I will see you back here in a moment to finalize and I'll show you how to weave in the ends with the tapestry needle. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just going single crocheting right to the end and then I wanna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. 
So we're going to trim off the yarn now and I wanna just make sure that I get these secured. This is a dishcloth so you, it's obviously gonna get some wear and tear. So the less you change colors in a dishcloth sometimes the better so that you don't have a lot of loose ends to, to think about falling out later. So you wanna take your time and you wanna drag it on the back side through the stitch work. The more plies that you can actually split apart the better. So if you go just in between stitches things will fall out. So when you go through just literally split the plies itself and you'll have a much better success of things not falling out on you. But always stay towards the back side so that you have a good side that's not interfered with any kind of loose ends. So you just wanna drag your work, uh, your, your stragglers through any loose ends that you have and then what you can end up with is a really cool project and it does have an alternative as you see here with the waterfall stitching but I still think it looks pretty cool. You know you could actually do it so this looks like a citrus. You can do lots of great things and this is another free pattern by our friends at yarnspirations.com and thank you so much and we hope you have a good day.